Good afternoon. We'd like to call the Senior Citizen Advisory Board meeting uh, to order. Items listed on the agenda may be taken out of the order presented. Two or more agenda items for consideration may be combined, and any item on the agenda may be removed or related discussion may be delayed at any time. Backup material for this agenda may be obtained from Luann Holmes, City Clerk, at the City Clerk's office at 495 South Main. We're in uh, compliance with the open meeting law, correct, Deputy Clerk? Yes. And at this time, we'll do roll call. Chair Heiss? Here. Member Vanderveer? Here. Member Oberlander? Here. Member Temple? Here. Member Bates? Here. Member Hank, Hank I'm sorry, Member Hank, Hankin? Here. Member Oscars? Here. And Member Moore is excused. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. At this time, we'd like to help open up for the public comment. During this portion of the agenda, must be limited to matters on the agenda for action. If you wish to be heard, please give your name for the board for the record. The amount of discussion as well as the amount of time any single speaker is allowed may be limited. So at this time, we're open for public comment. Good afternoon. Um, I'd like to say my name is Margaret Ann Coleman, and um, I am a citizen. Uh, a senior citizen. I'm 63 years of age. I've been here 34 years. I have been working continuously trying to correct the water uh, in the state of Nevada of arsenic lead poison and have it corrected of all the slush so we can have good water as a citizen uh, looking out for the best interest of the people. I have, I'm coming here due to the fact uh, I been a victim of illegal uh, crimes in the state of Nevada of eviction notices that stops me from getting into a place, apartment or home. The last place I did was a short sale, whereas I was tricked into pay $3,000 to help fix up a place and I was still illegally evicted. I would like something to be done. I'm in uh, Barlow's district, whereas it was a condemned apartment complex that was called the Sun City Apartment, whereas the bank owned the property uh, and they turned it into a catastrophe of clipping $150,000 using me. And because I lived in the complex and the Board of Commission and them know of me, uh, having the um, ownership of a court order that was worth three billion, they used me to their advantage to overthrow not only my financial but also now my accommodation. They also taken advantage of my family that is been placed into a serious uh, situation in the prisons or in the jailhouse, and I need the uh, cooperation of the senior citizens to give me some kind of. Um, help to get out of a car at this time. If you can uh, help me get into the projects in which I'm in ownership of called the Mormon Manor. Uh, I'm needing your assistance. If you could contact me at 439-8845 and uh, give me your full attention and see if you could help me because I've been ripped off as a citizen, uh, elder, 63 and with children, grandchildren, and used for different people's advantages. I would appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, could you please give your name again? I apologize, I didn't get it all. Margaret Ann Coleman. My phone number is 702-439-8845. All right, yeah, thank you, Ms. Coleman. We appreciate you appearing before us. Uh, Councilman uh, Barlow is his representative is new. She's Joanne uh, Bates up here on uh, the podium, as you can see where the name tags are. And what we will do is, is she and I have a meeting with Councilman Barlow next week, and we'll be happy to address it and have somebody get back with you about what can and can't be done. Please, because I'm tired of sleeping in a car. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just have one question. Hi, Ms. Coleman. Have you, Hi. Have you been to uh, inquired with Salvation Army or 
Las Vegas Rescue Mission? When I went there, I didn't qualify at the age of uh, 59 and 60. They wouldn't take 62 and under. I tried twice. They wouldn't even accommodate me uh, for rent assistance at the social services. I tried everything. Are you speaking about Salvation Army? Salvation Army, social services. I don't fit in. D did you go to the Las Vegas Rescue Mission? The, I, I went a long time ago uh, just for images of that nature, but this is totally different. Um, I'm trying to get some uh, ownership property called the Mormon Manor from a writ of execution and writ of garnish that was issued to me in my name, but I was taken advantage of and manipulated and left into the outside looking in and not knowing what was going on until I did investigation work. And then when I did investigation work to find out who was overthrowing me, it became into an insult to them, but more to me. The Board of Commission and them were using my um, lien that was worth $3 billion, 1% uh, stock of the Golden Nugget and the Mirage. They began to manipulate and overthrow me. Barlow knows of me, and I wish he would help me. Joe knows of me. So if you guys could talk with them, please. Okay. Maybe you have open ear knowing what old people goes through, because they don't even understand 33 is not an elder. I was 33 when I came into a court order that I won and should have been paid the next following week. But instead, I was taken advantage of and never uh, contacted, and when I found out the girl was obligated to pay me $143,000. But every time I call her, she hangs up. Shannon Moore Hughes is a manipulative uh, deputy clerk, and she gives no respect even to elders. You know, so this, the, this is why I'm here, and I'm glad you, you guys are here today to hear old people ways and needing improvement. Because I am 63 and I do deserve respect. Yes, ma'am, you, sure, sure, you sure do. And like I said, we will meet with Councilman Barlow and someone will get back with you. Please, because I'm tired of people laughing at me. All right, thank you so much. If I could please ask the council, uh, the board, you can't have your on because that's why we're getting feedback. So unless you're talking, please don't have the mic on because it'll feed back on us. Okay? All right, thank you very much. Anyone else for public uh, comment? All right, moving on to item four, for possible action to approve the final minutes by regular reference of the regular meeting of June 4th, 2015. Uh, has everyone had an opportunity to look at the minutes? All right. Um, our attorney is Val Steed, and Val, could you please direct us? Uh, since we have three new board members, the question has come up, since they did not attend the board meeting, if they should vote or abstain, or what are your thoughts on that? Uh, excuse me, I think we've had this conversation before, but uh, some people uh, think that the, a motion to approve the minutes is about memory, and if you're one of those people, you of course wouldn't vote on it. Other people believe, and I think the correct view is you're uh, voting on them in your capacity as a board member, whether or not you were there. You're simply offering your opinion that with no uh, objections having been made that the board, that the minutes should be approved. And so in that sense, everyone who's here is, is capable of voting. It's up to you to decide. All right, thank you for that clarification. So those of you that are comfortable when we take the vote may vote you know, a you know, you can abstain or do whichever you decide. But I wanted to get that cleared up because that we had been asked. All right, I need a motion to approve the minutes, please. I so move. I second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. All right. So moved. 
All right, at this time, uh, we're very honored to have some new board members. For those of you that were here earlier, um, we're going to be able to introduce each of our new board members. Uh, the board consists of eight people, two of them which are appointed by the mayor, and then the city council members each appoint one person. So the first person that uh, we'll have talk about herself is Carmen Bates. She represents uh, C Councilman Coffin's ward. And uh, Carmen, you go for it and just tell us what's what, about you and what you're doing. I'm new to the board, so I'm learning as I go along. I've been living in Ward 3 since 1979. I think I know it pretty well. I'm excited to be here and I'm open to any ideas and help. <laughs> and um, I'm just glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Our next new board member is Joanne Bates and she represents uh, Ka uh, Ricky Barlow's ward. Oscars. Oscars, I am so sorry. My mind is on something else there. I was thinking about what we were discussing earlier. I apologize, Joanne. And uh, she's gonna tell us about herself and what she does in our community. Hello, I'm Joanne Oscars, and I live at Sonoma Palms Apartments in Ward 5, one of five properties owned by George Chicakas. I do volunteer work for Silver State Housing. I'm kept pretty busy alongside of Lori Mühlhausen. Among my duties is working with Three Square, giving out food at some of the properties. I also do various things such as helping with potlucks and other activities that we have. I go to wherever I'm needed but I enjoy what I do because I like working with people. Yesterday, Sam's Club was at Sonoma Palms property along with 18 vendors passing out free samples and talking about their products. It turned out to be a very, very nice program for the residents. Thank you very much. Uh, the mayor's appointee is Judy Vandeveer and she will uh, tell you a little bit about herself and, and what she's going to be doing on the board. I'm Judy Vanver, and um, I've lived in uh, Clark County since 1953. Um, I'd like to say I was minus two when I moved here, but I really wasn't. Uh, my other activities for seniors, I'm on the Retired Public Employees of Nevada Board, and um, I'm going to become a member of the Silver-Haired Congress. So it appears that my life is being directed into senior issues, which is really exciting for me. And I hope that all those things will dovetail together and support one another. And um, I'm just really proud to be part of this board. Thank you. Thank you. And at this time, all right, moving on. At this time, we're going to have a report by um, Aaron Breen, who is the chair of Vulnerable Road Users Committee from the University of Las Vegas, Nevada Transportation Research Committee. Is that correct, Aaron? And her counterpart, who uh, was going to join her, is Robin out of uh, Councilwoman Tarkanian's um, office and unfortunately she had to be taken to the hospital when she fell earlier so thank you for coming Erin and we'll be able to follow up with the councilwoman's office so thank you very much thank you very much for having me um, I didn't realize we were going to be quite so formal today I brought some handouts of a presentation that Robin and I have put together Um, basically, I'm in the pedestrian safety business. Uh, I, that's my primary job through the Transportation Research Center and the Engineering College um, at UNLV. And I work with all different ages, trying to get roads changed, improved, speed limits lowered, um, all different kinds of issues, <coughs> excuse me, as they pertain to pedestrians. Um, it's no great secret that the senior population is the fastest growing in the state of Nevada. Um, actually, the, those under the age of 18 and those over the age of 65 are the two most rapidly growing populations here. In our pedestrian critical injury and fatalities numbers, seniors are the fastest growing population. And to me, it's, 
even more tragic and just really shines a light on the fact that we have to do more to get everyone safely across the street, but especially the senior population. So I brought you the first part today of an overview PowerPoint presentation that we're ready to go with right now. And because it's hot out, I just brought you the first part of the presentation because part two of this presentation is actually going out within neighborhoods um, with residents and talking about the issues that they have that either are preventing them from walking or causing them problems when they're walking. But this first presentation I brought you is basically just about safety, what happens in our community, where the biggest issues are, and gives opportunity for a lot of feedback. So right now in Clark County, uh, very sadly, we have killed 25 pedestrians um, through the 1st of July. Um, we've also had seven bicycle fatalities uh, versus none last year at this time. So in both of those populations, those over the age of 60 are the numbers that are growing the fastest. We have mean streets. If any of you have ever tried to walk them, um, they're very fast, they're very flat, they're very wide, and there are few opportunities to legally cross the street. So what happens is a lot of people, whether they're getting off a bus, I call it the seven lane dash to death. Um, and because bus stops are farther away than people are willing to walk from the corner. So there's just a, a multitude of issues in our community. So what we're trying to do is to directly go to the people that are being impacted the most. And walking and biking commuters, people who walk and bike out of necessity, not for exercise or recreation, they're the most likely to be killed. And they have some of the same habits that we have as drivers. Um, they lower their guard within the distance that they travel all the time. They may have crossed the street illegally and unsafely a hundred times, but the hundred and first time, they're not able to judge maybe how fast a car is going. So our presentation is geared to some of the issues that as seniors, you know, I just had cataract surgery myself, and I was truly amazed at what I was missing. I didn't realize it at the time until I had it done, and it was like a whole different world. So I think another issue is as our eyesight starts to decline, our ability to judge how fast a car is going, um, our peripheral vision, the things that, that physically we know changes that are happening, coupled with the dangers on our road, just make it a very difficult place to walk. And then there's the benefits of walking. And you know, it's the camaraderie, it's the exercise, it's the getting out and, and having involvement three times a week, four times a week, whatever it might be. So what we'd really like to do is do the safety presentation and then foster getting a group of people in a neighborhood or a development together that want to start walking and help them put that together. So we're, I'm really here today to talk to you about doing that in each one of the wards that you represent. And I know that Councilwoman Tarkanian wants us to start in her ward. So I've already reached out through the Housing Authority and I've done one presentation at Jamestown's Towers where I got a lot of great feedback from people who do walk. And then I was able to contact city engineers about retiming traffic signals so that they're getting more time to physically cross the street because it's very intimidating and also dangerous to only get halfway across the street and be waiting there for the light to change again for 180 seconds. Um, you know, cars aren't looking for you. So we want to go over what the safety problems are, get feedback about what the issues that they're already seeing are, and then make um, Give, offer the opportunity to help them foster a walking program and then come back and do the larger program um, with those who want to do a walking program and look and see what the dangers are in the actual physical realm that they would be walking, whether it be signals that need to be retimed, sidewalks that are buckling and need to be replaced. You know, if, if one square of that sidewalk pops up, that's, you know, that's a trip and fall hazard. Um, sadly, for the populations over the age of 65, um, 
the fifth leading traumatic cause, or fifth leading cause of death is a slip and fall, and it's a traumatic brain injury. So, you know, you have cancer, heart disease, and, and then number five is trauma from falling. So it's a big issue, and we know it is, so we want to start addressing that issue, and we thought this would be a great place to start. The city's always so wonderful to work with, and even more so on the upside, um, they're wonderful to work with to have the opportunity, but then going back to their staff, they move immediately to make changes. And so we're just offering an opportunity to get the feedback so maybe more people will be out walking, getting the exercise and the benefits of being with their friends or making new friends. So um, I also... I also brought you some little, we always try to bring tchotchkes whenever we're doing a presentation. So this is a, a really awesome one. I have it on my keychain, actually. It's a little zipper pouch, and you can put an ID, you can put coins. It attaches to a belt loop, or a, so just to give you an idea. But I'm going to leave you some, too, because this is like my favorite giveaway I've done in years. So any questions? Um, you might want to, if you're interested, you might want to check with um, Robin in Councilwoman Tarkanian's office as, or people that, that were going into to areas in, in her uh, area first. So you might, if you want feedback, you might want to check back and see what kind of response they're getting. So hopefully it'll be, it'll be a, an asset to the residents and neighbors in the areas that you represent. I'm in Ward 2, Councilman Beers Ward, uh -huh. and we have a walking group twice a week at the Wallapai Trailhead on Alta. Well, I would love to come present to them, existing as well. But we, uh, we stopped walking this summer because it's so hot. So we start up again in September. Which is why I didn't bring you the part two of that, because it is too hot. Even, you know, I did the presentation at James Downs Towers, I think the end of April, and we knew that already it was too hot to, you know, I don't want to be out there walking around doing the audit any more than anybody else wants to get out and walk. So I completely understand. Other questions or comments? Okay. I know firsthand what this lady has done in conjunction with Robin Medin and Louis Tartini's office because we had a problem with wheelchair accessibility. The city of Las Vegas, in all her infinite wisdom, put a traffic light right in the middle of the sidewalk, which made it impossible for wheelchairs to go around on either side. So the wheels started turning with actually Ms. Tartanian and Robin and Kim, and this lady got involved also. And uh, I got a knock on my door and said, I've never seen half of things happen so fast. As we speak, they are putting in wheelchair ramps. They already poured the concrete to remove and replace the sign. So this lady is getting something <laughs> done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's important to at least be able to provide the feedback. And then, you know, that's what I love about working with the city because I don't have to do follow up because. When they give you feedback and tell you that they're going to do something, it gets done. So it's lovely. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Thank you for coming to our meeting, and you're welcome to stay. We have some other interesting things on the agenda that you might be interested in. So thanks so much. Thank you very okay. much. All right. The next session is uh, item number seven. Presentation by Chair Heis for the board members to review meeting dates, board activities, and related programs. Uh, earlier this year, we had passed out all the information about the dates that we were going to be meeting, and I wanted to make sure that everybody had those, so all the new board members and everybody's on the same page. I know you have this in your board binders that you've received, but I just want to go over it so everybody's clear. Uh, as far as meeting, uh, we normally meet in the city clerk's conference room, which is across the hall, and today we have the pleasure, since we're being sworn in, to be able to use this room. And it is an open meeting, so anytime you want to bring guests or anyone from your ward or presentations, as long as we have them make, if they're going to make a formal presentation, they need to be on the agenda like Aaron was today. So that's part of the going over of the homework. Um, board activities. 
Uh, we've got a lot of things going on and we're gonna share with the new board members what's going on in each of our wards and it, uh, later we're gonna be talking about our big expo that's coming up on September 24th, which is a Thursday. And uh, also one of the programs that we've kind of lost sight of unfortunately is called Senior of the Quarter. And Senior of the Quarter is something that um, the board made uh, their program and it's defined as their program uh, for seniors who are 55 and older who do volunteer work. You don't have to live in the city of Las Vegas, but you need to be um, doing your volunteer work in the city. And this is a very big honor. What the city of Las Vegas does is, is they have it, uh, it's, a, it's a quarterly, and our next one is coming up, which will be the, at the council presentation next Wednesday at nine o'clock for any of you that would like to come. We are gonna be honoring Laurie Stone, who uh, has worked very hard uh, with, as a social worker and assisted with a lot of community services in, the, um, in her ward. And what's important about this is, is it is a honor to not only get nominated, but it is also something that we actively do in each ward. And some of the wards haven't had anyone. And so at this time, I'd like to make sure that all the board members have their form. I mailed you all a copy so you all had it, so you could copy it off. So we could see about getting at least one person from each of the wards, so we have a senior of the quarter nomination. I'd like to review the process we do not nominate somebody and tell them. What we do is, is we put in the application, the form is submitted, and it'll need to be submitted uh, for the uh, September board meeting, so everything will have to be submitted by September 1st, or before, you can submit it any time to Kathy Burkhart, um, who's one of our liaisons who's on vacation today, or to myself. And what we do is, is we go through the process at our meeting in September to review the uh, nominations, and then we as a board decide who we're going to select and honor and the presentation will be October 15th. Um, there has been some discussion about uh, people's eligibility uh, at some point and correct me, uh, uh, Attorney Steed, about uh, ineligibility if you're a current member serving on the board, do we need to put that in place? Th that, as far as I know, that hasn't been adopted as one of the limiters, so if the board decides to do that, it would be the subject of, a, of a, an item on the agenda to change that. Okay, uh, because we're not a self-serving board, and so that was the discussion that the previous uh, board members had had in the past, that you know we don't nominate ourselves, so we'll make sure that we get that on the board, so we can uh, put that also on our website, because all the, uh, eligibility issues are on the website. So if you pull up the city of Las Vegas and you go to programs, senior the quarters there with all that we do and how the process works. Does anybody at this time have any questions about senior the quarter? Because this is a really important program and I'd like to address anything that anybody might have at this time. Yes, ma'am. Can you all um, get a committee together? Oh, <laughs> thank you. My name is Margaret Coleman. Uh, can you all get a committee together concerning e illegal eviction notices? The Regency Building have changed the whole plot to evict people to lose their food stamps and their social security. By you not having a place to stay, you as in jeopardy uh, and no location for your, you know, your mailing and receiving it on time. Um, we need to confront the Regency Help Department because they just want to get a, a job. They're, they're sending constables out without giving three day, five days. They're only giving pay or quit. Now, if you don't turn yourself in or want to give yourself involved up on the three day, five day, you give a 30 day. They're not even giving the people the opportunity. You, you will see more people on the streets because of this. This not giving this three day, five day as before that at least give us a leeway to get a motion to stay as an elder and point out that we're elders and we can't move 
and three days or five days, and we need this 30 day. We don't even have that option anymore. I had to move in 24 hours. I hurt myself, I had to go to the hospital. All right, um, I appreciate your concerns and, and we were very pleased that you came to our meeting today. Unfortunately, we can't address that during this portion of the meeting, but I heard you and I will take it under consideration because we are talking about activities of the board. But just so you are aware, we do not have committees. We you do can't not create that. Yeah, we don't. We are, we are a board which is appointed by the mayor and by the city council and we are not uh, able in our jurisdiction, and please correct me, Attorney Steed, if I'm misleading, well, if it comes but we're not up, allowed to, we if, don't do committees. If it comes so. up that we need to correct the, the health center, they just try to create that, keep a job for themselves. They're not thinking about the citizens, okay, uh, elders. So if it comes up, please, because that's one reason why I haven't gotten in to another place. All right. Because it's an illegal eviction notice without a three day, five day. All right. Thank All right. you. Thank you very much. Could you turn the mic off, please, ma'am? Could you turn that? Oh, it went off. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, any questions about senior the quarter or activities of the board that we are doing? Anybody have any questions? When is the next presentation for the senior citizen of the quarter? The senior of the quarter is Wednesday, July 15th at 9 a.m. Any other questions? All right. Number eight, discussion for possible action on reports given by board members regarding senior issues within their respective wards. This is a portion of the meeting where we go in ward by one and talk about what we're doing as far as projects and anything that is going on and we go in order of the ward. So the first ward that we will be addressing is Ward 1, Lois Tarkanian, and uh, Board Member Oberlander will begin that session. Well, firstly, uh, some of my ward projects uh, are going extremely well, especially our food drive. And we've had uh, initial meetings with Stephanie Richard, who is a community program specialist at Deerfield Senior Center. And uh, by the way, her daughter, Becky is the innovator and the founder of Mother Hubbard's Cupboard. Although this isn't in my ward, we overlap a little bit, and I worked the last three of them in Mr. Barlow's ward, the distribution and the pickup. And uh, so we are targeting the next one giveaway is October 16th. In uh, Ward 1, we are targeting pickup the first weekend week in uh, October. And with 14 schools, it's too much. Too much work, too many products. So we're splitting the schools into seven and seven. We're going to do a fall and we're going to do a spring in conjunction with Mother Hubbard's cupboard. And uh, we're moving along very well on that. And uh, just for a little insight, when Mr. Barlow had his food drive, he used uh, a can for an incentive, X amount of 60 cents or 50 cents a can. Well, that created a, a big logistic problem. You're not going to believe this, but over 14,000 items were picked up and we worked at that for two days. It took the people at Deerfield coming in on Saturday and Sundays to help clean it up. We were actually using wheelbarrows and shovels. We found cans that were nine years old. So we got to fine tune it. We're going to be more specific. We're going to give the schools direction. This school will take, uh, we appreciate pasta and, and canned fruit and this school will go this direction, this direction and we'll split it. We, if we figure if we get five, $600, quality items, it beats the heck out of 2,000 things that we have to throw away. So that's how we're fine tuning it. So it, it, without taking too much time, more time, this program is going along very, very well. And, and it's had several meetings with Stephanie uh, Richard also. Now that program, as good as that one's going, I, I'm, I see I'm a total failure at my other program, which was trying to get recycling program in Ward 1 which I kind of put the cart before the horse. The initial thing was that I would contact the synagogues, the churches and whatever and get their response to teaching the youth how to recycle. Well, that went all right. But when I contacted recycling people, I ran into a stone wall. Basically they said, we're not in a giving end, we're in a taking end. 
I said, you're not going to do anything community conscious and give us some dumpster or give us some uh, receptacles? Oh, yeah, we'll give you receptacles. We're only going to charge you X amount of dollars. I said, no, you don't understand. You supply the receptacles free. You come and pick it up. You weigh everything out, and then you cut a check that goes back to the church or wherever. Oh, I said, we don't do that. We're not the giving business. I said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Two people hung up on me. Maybe I wasn't as tactful as I should have been, but I thought it was just terrible the way they handle it. So I'm not giving up on the project, but I could sure use some help or some ideas on how we can do this. The reason it started with the churches in, in, in the initial thing was because it's too hot and schools are out. We were going to expand it to schools and the principals. And Mr. Tini was meeting with the principals. They're receptive to it as another learning tool for recycling. So right now, I'm kind of at a loss for what to do on that project. And the next project involves everybody, so I'll just cut my time short. Uh, we're talking about uh, inspired, not retired. So that's all I have, Chairman. Thank you so much. All right, we're into Ward 2, which is Councilman Beers, and that's Trudy Temple. We continue to have our once a month, the councilman has coffee with um, the people in his ward. And then once a month, he has a beer with people from his ward. So we can, he continues to do that. And like I said, we've postponed our walking group until September because of the heat. Thank you so much. All right, we're into Ward 3, which is Councilman Coffin. And we're ready for Carmen. Carmen Bates here. I'm going to pick up where Fran Drury left off. I'm looking at her notes here from last Ward 3 update. Um, I plan to visit a few of the entities, Las Vegas Food Pantry, East Las Vegas Community Center, to familiarize myself with the entities and also to see what type of help is needed out there and um, attend the coffee with Bob Coffin, his monthly um, get together and other Ward 3 events. I know I'll have more to report next time, but for now, that's it. Thank you, and thank you very much. All right, we're into Ward 4, which is uh, Councilman Anthony's, and we're with Mail. At the moment, as in months in the past, Ward 4 is very slow since the last shredding, and um, I have nothing further to report uh, other than he's projecting another shredding probably in August. And that's all I have to report. Thank you. All right, with Ward 5, uh, Councilman Barlow and Joanne Oscars. Hello, Joanne Oscars here. Um, I really wasn't quite prepared uh, for what I was to report on today, but um, we do things such as uh, giving out food by three square at uh, all of our properties, and we do bingo activities, exercise classes. Uh, we have sewing classes, and uh, j yesterday we had a um, Sam's Club came, and they had 18 vendors and they were there to uh, hand out free samples to the residents and talk about some of their products, and it, it went very, very well. So hopefully next time I'll have more for you. Great, and thank you very much. All right, Pro Tem uh, Stephen Ross is representative of Mickey Moore, and uh, Mickey is on vacation at this time, and Councilman Ross just wanted to extend, uh, he has an open door policy, so if there's anything that anybody has that, you know, you would like to discuss with him in his ward and things that will be going on, you're welcome to contact his office and uh, visit with him because he's very, very friendly and very accessible. All right, and uh, our new person, uh, new appointee from the mayor's office and the reappointee myself, we jointly have a couple projects. So go ahead, Judy. Mary Ellen, the only 
project I'm aware of is the 24th of September when we're going right. to um, put on the event here at City Hall, which is the first time it's going to be at City Hall, which is excellent for the people to uh, get to know their City Hall. This is only my second time down here, so I think that that's, that's a, a really good idea. And I'll just be learning and working with Mary Ellen on whatever she needs me to do. <laughs> Thank you. I love to put people on the spot yes, that I love. You do. <laughs> um, also, uh, Judy's very quiet about this. Uh, Mayor Goodman has suggested that we uh, entertain having a cookbook, the Senior Citizen Cookbook. And uh, so Judy is going to be working on getting some ideas and uh, the mayor has suggested a couple things. She thought it would be kind of fun to have a tastings, uh, see how far we can go with like a biography, pictures. So we're open to some ideas, but that's something because uh, it's a new idea and something fun to do. And she wants to see not only our board be out in our wards in our community, but also have a lot of fun. So we're looking forward to that as well. And if any of you have worked on creating a cookbook for any of your volunteer organizations, uh, we would love to hear what company you used and what your successes and failures were. So we're open to that. Thank you. I thought she was going to lead with that because she was so excited about it when we talked. That's funny. All right. At this time, we will go on to item nine. Discussion for possible action regarding the Inspired Not Retired Expo scheduled for September 24th, 2015. Um, as it's been mentioned, uh, we are in the neon. Uh, this is our big event. What it is, is it's an opportunity for us to be able to bring the community to City Hall. Uh, it has been brought to our attention that a lot of people have not even been here to City Hall. Uh, when Carmen Bates and I met with uh, Councilman Coffin's staff. They suggested that we contact the Housing Authority for transportation. Uh, Councilman Barlow is going to be meeting with Joanne Oscars and myself, uh, and we're going to get some input from him next week. I would strongly suggest that each of you talk to your council person now and get their input as to how they're going to get the people in their wards here. Uh, if there's a transportation issue uh, and we need to work on possibly getting them like say for example there's destinations ages some of these you know facilities to be able to get them to come like I'm, I'm curious I don't know how James Down Tower if there's any talk about how you're going to get people here I think this is the time because it is July we've only got a couple months all of our speakers are lined up uh, the mayor will be welcoming everybody the, everybody is aware that this is where the speakers are in the City Council uh, the mayor will open it up. Betsy Fretwell, the city manager, that those of you that had not had the opportunity to meet her, she's going to follow up with the mayor. Shelley Berkeley will be following up after that. She is going to bring the Toro University Medical uh, Mobile Unit, and we're going to be doing screenings and everything out in the front. Uh, Council, um, excuse me, Fire Chief McDonald is going to be uh, here to talk about senior safety. Uh, Tim Szymanski is going to have a vendor's booth out there uh, in the lobby. Uh, Holly James is coming from the FBI, and she's going to talk about Internet safety. So we've got a whole range of speakers that are going to be actually speaking in here that are going to be able to address and talk with the folks, and we've given everybody an hour. Uh, we're going to provide lunch in the Now Cafe. Uh, Marty uh, Toledo, who is our other liaison, he and Kathy both have worked very hard on this. Marty is doing the diagram and working to get all the vendors. We're approximately going to have about 25 vendors. They're going to be all out in the hallway, so we've got everything set up out there. Uh, the lunch is going to take place in the Now Cafe, and it's right straight down the hall here on the second level for those of you that have not had an opportunity. That's where we had the reception after our last board meeting. And we're going to be able to have lunch with our council staff. And the council staff will be uh, Ann Capolin. She is one of the people that it represents. And do you represent just one or both wards now? Just one. So what we'll have is that we'll have the city council person and their staff and uh, their community outreach folks with you. And you'll be having lunch with your folks and visiting with them about their concerns, about what's going on. All of us will need to be here uh, by 7, 7.30 in the morning. Uh, we will have a full day to get everything ready to go. 
Uh, we're gonna need some assistance probably the day before. Marty's gonna get back with me on uh, how we're gonna do the setup because he's working with some other departments Wednesday night because we don't wanna be scurrying at the last minute. So all the tables and everything will be here. So Wednesday, so Thursday morning, we'll here be between seven and 7.30. We'll park over at the city garage and we'll validate our tickets. Uh, we'll have lunch. Uh, we're basically at our council person's um, mercy, whatever they need help with that day. Uh, I know Lois Tarkanian has spoken to us and wants to be here for at least a couple hours. So people are gonna be very involved that day and we just wanna make sure that we're all accessible and ready to go. Because that's a big event for us. Aaron, before you leave, I do want to make a note. I was gonna talk to you about that. We would like you to have a table at our vendors. So you told <laughs> Ann? Good, thank you. No problem, no, that's great, thank you. So um, at this point, uh, we need to make sure that your council and their staff are all on board with the timing. Lunch is 11 to 12. And if, you just, if they wanna be here longer, that's not a problem. We, we will accommodate whatever. The tables are gonna, your board tables are gonna be set up in the NOW Cafe. Uh, I was asked about using the patio because of the heat. At this time, I can't say it's fine because I don't wanna put people out there and have you know, strokes. So I think it's more important that we utilize this, the area that we know that we for sure can be using. Um, pretty much uh, the pro bono office, law office has still not contacted me. I, I know they contacted me, they're gonna have a booth. Good, okay, so if you can give the contact information, uh, person's name, we need the person's name, telephone number and email, correct Marty? Okay, we need to have all that information so we have that accessible to us because then we're going to divvy up the list between our board and contact everybody to remind them what time they need to be here and see what else they may need on that day. Does anybody have any questions about uh, what we're doing on that day and what we need to do? Now, as far as the new board members go, I would ask you to please go into your wards and possibly look at programs or people that you think would be good accessible contacts for our seniors. Uh, for example, the RTC is coming and they're gonna do giveaways. And so we wanna be able to, whatever we're gonna be doing with the seniors, these are our workshops that we do. We used to do them in each ward and we have decided to do one big one here at City Hall to bring everybody here and to have it so it's more of a all community instead of just in the wards. And actually this was Councilwoman Tarkanian's idea when Don Oberlander and I met with her. So we thought it was a pretty good idea to get everybody involved and get them here. So. Uh, if you get a name of a person and their organization, we need that along with their email and their phone number and we need to get that in because we wanna be able, like I said, to combine that list and to have it all accessible for everyone. All right, any questions? We've got these, we still got these magazines for those of you that have not had an opportunity to see it, they did a very nice uh, article and display of us, so that was great. All right, uh, now, Questions? Everybody's real quiet today. <laughs> All right. Item 10, discussion for possible action regarding proposed amendments to the board's ordinance to change the board's name and revise its purpose. We're going to strike that, uh, Deputy Clerk. We, need a motion for that, we do need a motion. If somebody could give me a motion for that, please. Sorry. Uh, Judy Vandiver, I move that we strike the uh, Number 10, agenda no, item. Okay. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? All right, so moved, thank you. All right, item 11, discussion for possible action to elect officers for the upcoming year 2015-2016. All right, on this item of the agenda, what we will do is, is uh, there are two offices that we have for the board. We have chair, and then once we get through that process, we'll go through the co-chair. Uh, responsibilities basically for the chair are to um, not only organize projects, meetings, work with the wards, um, make sure that uh, you're pretty much accessible for any of the board members, uh, we work with the different folks in the offices. There's different departments uh, in the community. 
uh, make sure that you're available to go to all the activities. And we're looking at, usually it's approximately 30, 35 hours a week, depending upon uh, what's going on and what type of involvement you want to have the board involved in. The Senior Citizen Advisory Board fortunately has um, come a long ways in the past and a lot of people look at us for different leadership avenues in the community with seniors and look to our leadership as to what we're going to do. Um, the vice chair is uh, the person that would back up uh, and do any of the board work that would be going along with the chair. Uh, in this uh, case, uh, those two folks are gonna be not only very involved with the, with the going on of the um, September 24th event, but other community projects that we're looking at. So the person that would do that would also have the backup if the chair was not available. And uh, I would say that they probably pretty much need to be on call like the chair. So it's just pretty much a team effort. Uh, it's a great way to lead uh, our board and our community and work to continue to make a difference with our senior population. Does anybody have any questions about the offices? All right. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's the only us. Thank you. Um, all right. At this time, uh, nominations are in order for chair. This goes without saying, of course. I nominate Mary Ellen Heisey. Thank you. Character. All right. Any other nominations? In our rules, are you committed to run for one more continuing term, or do you have to forego it for another year? In our bylaws, ma'am. In our bylaws. Yes. Uh, the officers, it's item C. We uh, amended that last year. The officers shall be elected from among the members of the first board meeting in July. Officers serve for a term of year until their successors are elected. They took out the term limitations last time. But thank you for that clarification. I appreciate it. I second the nomination of Mary Ellen Heiss, Judy Vandiver. All right. Voting, please. All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed? <laughs> Abstention. All right, well, okay, here we go. All right, thank you very much. And it is an honor to serve and represent each of you. Um, I enjoy working with each of you. It is a great team effort. And without all of us on, the, on board and working together, it would, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing in the city. So thank you very much. And I really, really do sincerely appreciate each and every one of you. All right, nominations are in order for the vice chair. Uh, we, we, do need, <laughs> we do need some help up here. <laughs> Carmen Bates, I nominate Don Overlander. Judy Vanderer, I second that nomination. All right, the board has nominated Don Oberlander as the vice chair. Any other nominations? All right. All those in favor of Don Oberlander, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. All right, thank you. <laughs> I was wondering if I was going to get any help here, you guys. <laughs> I'd, li I'd like to make a little clarification. This is, an, I think, is an error. It doesn't, isn't a co-chair, it's, it's G, co-chair. <laughs> Just so we understand that. Oh, a little levity always helps in life. I'm taking Mickey's place. <laughs> yes, and unfortunately Mickey couldn't be here, but he was very actively involved in talking to me before he left. He was really excited about the upcoming year. He's a riot. All right, so now we have the officers in order for the upcoming year. And let me see what is next on my agenda because I'm right here. There we go. Item. Let's see. 
Okay, the next item of agenda uh, for the agenda is uh, citizens' participation. This is the public uh, comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the board and no subject may be acted upon by the board unless that subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, please give your name for the record, the amount of discussion on any single subject, as well as the amount of time any single speaker is allowed and may be limited. So we're looking for public comment on things about what we do on the board. Does anybody have any comments? Yes, my name is Margaret Ann Coleman, and um, I would like to know when the next meeting is gonna be, and I would like to get involved. Uh, I'm probably getting a seat up there, and if you could contact me, um, fill me in. Uh, I know I've been trying to act young because I've been trying to get a husband to take care of me and get me off the streets, but that's here nor there. Uh, I have to take my, on my own responsibilities. I am sickly, but I would like to, only way I can slowly do it is get involved with my peers. So could you call me? Uh, our meetings are the first Thursday of every month at one o'clock except for January and July. So it's always the first Thursday of each month. Okay. And they're open meetings and anybody can attend. Okay, because I've been going to the Board of City Council and Board of Commissioners and this is the first time senior citizens. So I would appreciate if you contact me. I uh, know we do not physically go out and contact people to come. No, I gave her my number, so on the other issue. Right, on the other issues, yes, we can address those uh, after we meet with Councilman Barlow and see how he'd like it handled in his ward. And even at that, if you could help me get involved with you all, I would love it. All right, great, thank you so much. Okay, and you guys uh, have a good day, I have to go now. All right, thank, thank you. you. Drive safely. I know that uh, Board Member Vandeveer had some folks here. Did you want to talk about uh, your involvement in the community or say anything about what you had dis what you were discussing with me earlier? Okay, so there's nothing. I All think right. Lonnie just stepped out, um, but she's the uh, chairman of the uh, Retired Public Employees of Nevada Association. And she's also a member of the Silver Haired Congress, uh, which is a lobbying group for seniors, both statewide and national wide. And that's the one she wants me to get involved in. And Leslie, my, my other friend, I met both of them on the RPEN board when we were fighting the legislature this last session, uh, and won this time. But um, anyway, I'm sorry Lonnie stepped out, but she's really a an asset to our community. All right, thank you. Uh, anyone else? Public comments? We don't have a lot of public people in here right now. You guys, you guys are as quiet as, the, as our council, our board. All right, um, I normally don't go over the agenda items for board meetings, but since we are talking about the next board meeting, August 6th, last year we had a little bit of a challenge because people are on vacation. Is everyone on board for the August 6th board meeting? Okay, all right, uh, then, then because we had to cancel it, so I wanna make sure that we're all on board because it does not only just involve the time of the, uh, ourselves getting here, but it is, involves the staff, uh, people's you know, paid city staff, as well as uh, people that look at our agenda, we wanna make sure that we're in compliance. So everybody's good with the August 6th board meeting at one o'clock and we don't need to worry about vacations and we're good. Um, as you look at the dates, I just wanna remind you that if you know you're not gonna be available or cannot make it to a board meeting, just to give us the heads up so we know because we do need to have to have a quorum. All right, any other items of business? I have a question. Sure. Uh, the last meeting, uh, you mentioned something about the uh, doing something for vision and uh, dental. It, it was supposed to be in August. That is in uh, Don Oberlander's uh, ward, so we'll let him take that lead. Oh, okay, okay, all right. You want me to address that? Yes, sir. The reason I didn't have it on one of my ward projects was simply because it, it's not until October, and uh, Robin had a mishap, and she has all kinds of these uh, the, the, what it's all about and where it's taking place at the Tartinian Basketball Academy that's in the area of uh, Palace Station. So I thought I had another month, but I will make sure that everybody, everybody gets a couple hundred of these, you know, for the people. And it is totally free. Dental, eyeglasses, they grind them on the, on the 
van, you know, on the big hauler. I'll make sure that I get all of these around next meeting and pass them out. I'll give you hundreds of them so you can give them to people. But I just left it out this time because time, time restraints. It was getting a little. But well, thank you for asking. We'll make sure you get them. Yeah. We pass, or do you have more of those on? Uh, well, okay. We'll just pass them down. No problem. That's all yeah. I have with, with me. We'll rob him of what he has. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, this moved along very swiftly. So without further ado, we will adjourn. And thank you very much and have a great rest of your day. And thank you again.